All right, welcome back to another redstone tutorial. Today we're going to be doing tileable farms. As you can see, we have some examples here in the front and you can see how they tile in the back. That's going to give you a whole bunch of different things that you can tile together to make your farms as small. Maybe you only want that one block or as wide or as tall as you want to go. So let's jump in and see what you can grow here. All right, and we're going to start with the things that grow up. These are going to be really easy and pretty straightforward to build. So we're just going to take two blocks up. We're going to put a grass in front. We're going to put our piston on top of this facing us. And then with the observer, this is the tricky part. You have to go behind so that it's looking the direction you want it to go. We're going to place another block behind and a redstone. And that's pretty much the whole farm. Kind of a boring tutorial, but let's look and see what the variations are. So let me build up three more of these and then I'll show you what the variances are here. Okay, now that I got those three built up really quick, you'll see that I deleted out the block here. What we're gonna do is actually just put a mangrove roots here and waterlog it. So you can do that however you want. If you don't have these, you can put trap doors, you can put whatever you want. I just like to use this because it holds the water, so it makes it easy. All right, now let me get out the three different variances. Oh, I forgot one. This one is gonna have water in it. So we need to build a little tunnel here. And we're gonna fill it up with water. You can probably guess what this is, but let's grab out the ingredients that we're gonna use to make these four different farms. Okay, so this is gonna be pretty straightforward. We have the bamboo, we have the twisted vine, we have the kelp, and we have the sugar cane. Now we need that water because sugar cane can't be planted without it. And pretty quick, we've got it done. So as you can see, you can collect this however you want. You can build up the walls so that it all falls down the right way. We're not gonna go over the collection methods. Usually you can just use a rail here or some hoppers but that is your growing up version. Now let's transition to growing down. Okay, those hanging down ones are almost the same as this. We're just gonna flop these two. So we're gonna start with our blocks on the bottom. We're gonna take our observers, still facing the same direction as all the others, taking a piston, putting that on top, taking a stone on the back of the observer, and a simple piece of redstone. Now that's the mechanical part. Next, we need to put what's actually hanging down. So we'll go up two and over one. On one of them, we're going to put a dripstone. The other, we're going to put a weeping vine. And then on top of this, same trick as before, but you can put the water up there however you want. And that is how easy those farms are. So now I'm going to turn up our game tick speed so that we can see these grow a little bit quicker. But over time, these will just run and automatically go for you. So let me turn that up and let's see how they work. All right, and we got that random tick speed set to 1000. So this is a lot faster than what you would normally get in game, but you can see that's working pretty quick. Now these ones might be the slower ones. And actually, I don't know if the rooted dirt here works, so we might actually need to put in actual water up here that rooted might change it so we'll swap that out real quick just make it regular water but as you can see these farms are creating a lot now this is not going to be how fast your farm normally is but you can see how quick we can get those but there's one other variant that i think we should do and that is the side by side farm let me put that one together real quick or get the materials together real quick and we'll check that one out too. Okay, this side-by-side -side farm, again, is going to be pretty easy. We're going to start with a rooted dirt. Put that down. And I'm going to build two of these at the same time, just so we can see what they look like. Next, we're going to put a piston on top of that. On top of this one. On top of that. And then we're going to take an observer that faces the same direction. We're going to take some grass real quick. Pop that down in front of those. We're going to stick the water here and here. 
hoe the land. And then we need to put some stone real quick in the back. Redstone on top. And that is the basic setup. Next, we just need to add our pumpkin seeds. And then over here, we would put a melon seed in there. And that's how easy. You saw how those ticked. That's going to do it every time these grow. I'll break this real quick. Is if as soon as this goes and bends over, put the pumpkin in there, it's going to pop it off. Let me increase the random tick speed again and we'll see how these ones work. Okay, now that I've got that turned up, we're actually going to turn this into a melon farm. So you can see those melons grow up. And as you can see already, even though while these are running, these ones too start popping it off. So next, really, the only thing we need to do is kind of show you what some of these look like when we tile them. So I'm going to make some copies. We're going to use world edit so I don't have to keep rebuilding them. Although rebuilding is really not that hard, but I'll show you what some examples look like that you can build when you tile them. Okay, I pasted that a few times for our bamboo farm. Now what's cool about this is it's really just the same thing repeated over and over. That's why, the, why they are called tileable farms. So this is gonna work, but what's interesting is if I take this, you'll see that right now all of those fire. So that'll actually be nice because it'll break it even if a whole bunch of these only get to one high and then that hits, it'll still harvest it for you. Now, if you don't want that, then you're okay with a little slower, or you don't have the resources, you can actually take out all of them but one, because as you can see, the redstone in the back is connected. So what's nice about that is as these grow, maybe they grow a little extra, and you only want to harvest once in a while. You'll see that that's going to work too. So you don't need to have all the observers. You can substitute that out. Okay, and now with the hanging down ones, these ones get a little bit different because what you're going to see is that the redstone, when you tile them, will actually connect. And they're not really going to trigger these pistons. So you can see when I let this grow down naturally, it's not going to send the signal through there. So on these, we're going to do them just a tiny bit different. We're actually going to either get a redstone lamp or similar, where it still makes the redstone interact with the piston, and then really we don't need these ones. So every other one, you can actually take those out. And as you can see, when we put these in, it's going to trigger that. So these ones can grow all the way down. And any time that these ones grow over, they're going to trigger that. So simple fix, a little bit different than what we did over here, but that's pretty easy. Next is those side-by-side -side farms. As you can see, it's that little group of four. We just repeat over and over and you can see it's already working perfect. So that one's pretty simple. It's going to work every time. And let's see if I can get a pumpkin here. You can see this will actually trigger. Oh, you see how it doesn't bend that stem. We got to let it go naturally. But when it bends over, it'll actually shoot all of these pistons. So that's a pretty cool way to be able to line those up. And you can do this however long you want. It won't always do the row. If we went 200 blocks, it's not going to do them all because of the limitations of redstone. But that's pretty tolerable. You can stack these on top of each other, side by side, and you're going to be able to do that with all these different farms. So that is kind of that tutorial today. If you have any questions, please put them down in the comments. And did I miss anything? Is there any other things that grow up, grow down, or grow side by side that we could put in this kind of a redstone farm. If there is, please leave them down in the comments. But y'all, that is going to do it for today. Thanks for watching, and watch for these to come into my achromatic craft world. That's why we do all these tutorials, is because they're gonna be built into there soon. So go check out that series, and we'll talk to you soon.